Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we're going to be upcycling some tin cans. Let's go ahead and get started. So upcycling tin cans is nothing new. It's been around for years and years and years, but I will say in this last year, it's been very popular to turn them into little hangers. I know I'm late to this party, but I just had um, someone reach out and donate a lot of the large tin cans to me and it gave me the perfect opportunity to try this um, kind of trending craft for myself. Thankfully for me, um, these were donated to someone else for an event, so they were already cleaned and prepped and everything is good. I didn't have to do any of the messy work, they were just donated from a cafeteria and once they were done with them, they were going to recycle them, but I was reached out to and asked if I wanted them. So of course I took them. So to begin this project, you're obviously going to want to pick whatever tin can that you're gonna use. Um, I've seen a lot of people do them with the great big ones, which <clears throat> if you're not feeding a ton of people, you might not have access to those, but you can reach out to like your local schools in the area and see if they're willing to donate any of them to you. These ones, like I said, were already prepped that um, the tops were off of them and they were cleaned up really nice. Some of them were even already spray painted. So yeah, <laughs> to start with this, what I'm going to need to do is go ahead and remove the bottom of it as well. So I'm just using my standard kitchen um, can opener and removing that bottom piece. And then I'm going to go ahead and dispose of that because it is sharp. You don't want it just laying around. I'm known for just like setting things aside and then having possible injuries later. So make sure you dispose of that safely and then we can move on to the next part. The reason you'll want the top and the bottom missing out of this is because you're gonna need to squish them. I chose one of the plain um, tin cans and then one of the ones that they had already spray painted like this like bronzy gold color. And I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can do it. The first one is just with your foot. Make sure that you have on shoes like closed toed shoes that cover your foot completely to make sure that you are safe. And I do suggest some type of glove for you just in case you get any sharp edges um, and you're just going to go outside or wherever you're doing it. I put down an old rag so that the tin can wasn't scraping against the concrete. I just took my hands and I kind of like pre-squished it a little bit the best I could to get it started. And then on one end of it, you're just going to kind of step down and slowly squish that can to get it as closed at the bottom as possible. Now, I know that there are some people who, you know, they'll, they'll glue it shut or wire it shut or do something at the bottom. I'm not going to take that step in here, but you are more than welcome to do that depending on what you're going to put in. I don't feel like it's necessary for the projects that I'm doing. So it's as simple as that. These cans are very easy to squish, but you do need to make sure that you um, hit that bottom, like the sides of it where it's starting to bend and get those as creased as possible because that's what's going to hold it kind of pinched and in place at the bottom. That's the first and easy one and I'm showing you that because not everyone has the next thing that I will be using. So I'm lucky enough that my boyfriend has a vise um, on our cabinet in the garage and so I'm going to use that to squish the second one. So with this, I did the same thing. I used my hands to kind of pre-squish it to kind of flatten it out a little bit. And then I just put like the bottom two to three inches into the vise and just wrenched it down in one spot, took it out, moved it over. And I did put that rag inside again to prevent as much scraping as possible. And then I also did that in the middle and I cinched it down and that gave me a really, a much like closer pinch at the bottom if that makes sense um so if you have one of those available I've also seen people where they take like a rubber mallet and they pre-squish it and then they use that mallet to kind of really tap it down so you can just kind of be creative on what will work best for you in the situation and the items that you have once that was done it is time for the fun part we are going to decorate these can be done in so many different ways I've seen all kinds of beautiful I've seen all kinds of beautiful tin cans that people have remade in so many different ways, but I like to stay true to myself and do what fits me. So that's what I'm going to do here. 
I don't know if you can hear my daughter or if you just think I'm crazy because I'm looking at the walls, but she's happy in her room over there just watching her show and giggling and laughing and yelling. So you hear her, let her live her life. She's fine. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start with some chalk paint. I'm going to use white chalk paint. Um, it's just the Art Minds chalk paint. And then I'm going to be using the Home Decor chalk paint in the color Sage. This is one of my favorites if I do a color because it's it's just a beautiful color, but it's also kind of muted. Um, I like to, every now and then, I love color, don't get me wrong. I like to have a, a piece that's really colorful and stuff, but I've try, been trying to keep my pieces a little more muted and then bring them to life with the flower, florals that I add or like other different things because not every piece that I make, if it's in a bright color, will fit in just anyone's home. So that's why on my channel you might see me doing a lot of the more muted colors and things. It's not that I'm afraid of color. I love color, but when I do resell my projects, it's easier to find a home if they're, you know, a little more simple and a little more neutral and they can fit just, just about anywhere. So that's why I do that. Um, anyway. I am going to actually be using my white chalk paint that is already mixed with baking soda. If you've never seen this technique done before, you just take equal parts paint and equal parts baking soda, you put them in a bowl and you mix them up. And it'll be really thick at first, but I promise you if you just keep mixing, it'll kind of just melt together. And what this is going to do is leave a really beautiful texture on your pieces and it will stick to anything. So if you have a gla old glass jar, an old ceramic vase or something that like it needs a new look, but you're not really sure how to paint it, give this a try. It'll give it kind of like a cementy texture. Um, and so it will definitely change the texture of it, but it is beautiful and it sticks very, very well. And then if for some reason you can't get it to stick, all you need to do is go hit that piece with some um, like clear Rust-Oleum spray paint or something, some type of clear sealer, and it'll help give it something to adhere to. So I'm going to be using the white baking soda mixture on the silver tin can, and then I'm going to be using the sage on the golden or like bronzy tin can. And I'm just going to paint those up. So I'm just going to do... Um, the fronts of each side and I'm going to apply it all on and I'm going to take my brush all the way from one side to the other and what that's going to do is smooth out all of my brush strokes so you can't really see where one ends and one begins and I'm going to let that dry. I am going to use the help of my heat gun. Don't forget that these are tin so if you get too much heat on them they will heat up. I just don't want you to burn yourself but you probably wouldn't be applying that much heat to begin with. Once they're dry, I'm going to flip them over and do the backside. I always like to keep my backsides nice and clean and looking nice as well because there's nothing more off-putting to me than seeing this beautiful piece of art and then you turn it over and it's just what happened here. It doesn't take you very long to just finish that side out too, so that's my suggestion to you. Pay attention to those details because they do make a difference and some of us really do pay attention. Once that's completely dry, we're going to do a wet distress. I really want to bring those colors from beneath back through. I'm going to do it on the sage and like bronze can just a little bit. Like I'm going to just bring it, bring it back on those raised edges to bring it through, give it some dimension, some character. And then with the white and silver one, I'm going to really distress that down and try to get quite a bit of a distress on it so that it has a lot of texture from the paint and a lot of dimension from the can coming through and just give it a little bit more to look at, especially since it's, you know, more of those plain doll colors. Once that's ready, it is time to move on to the actual design. I'm going to start with the sage can and I'm just going to use this little bee that I had used before on my wood burning project and I'm going to transfer it on using carbon paper. I'm just going to tape it on. This is a little tricky because of all the little um, like indents in the can. So I had to go back over several times and really get in there to get my outline going. But I just used the carbon paper and a pencil, traced it on there, pulled it off, and then I'm going to paint it up with some white paint. In retrospect, I would have loved to use more of an off-white. And I think that would have really fit the piece a little bit better. But I didn't, so what I'm going to do once I am done, just tracing that all out, giving it a good coat of paint, let it dry, and I'm going to lightly distress 
around the bee just to kind of make it blend with the can a little bit. And then I'm going to take my hard bristle brush um, or chip brush and give it a dry brush over with that white just to kind of bring the whole piece together. I feel like it did look like there was some separation um, due to the colors kind of clashing a little bit. After that dried, I'm going to take that one and the white one outside and spray them with my Rust-Oleum Clear Matte. It's a sealer. It's going to just seal all of those paints in and make sure that nothing's just going to scratch off really easily or reactivate when it's wet. Going to let that dry and then we're ready to move on and start finishing up the sage bucket. I'm going to use some of this nautical rope that I picked up. I believe I got this one from Michael's and I'm going to put a piece around the bottom and the top of the tin can just to give it a little more dimension and texture. Um, I'm just cutting those with my fabric scissors and then I'm going to use some hot glue to kind of stick the ends together so that they don't unravel. And then I'm going to be using E6000 and hot glue around the, um, the bottom of the can to start to make sure that it adheres and that it not only adheres but it adheres for a long time. So the hot glue is going to act as a quick set and then the E6000 is going to make sure that you can't just peel it off or it's not just going to fall off at a later time. And then I also made sure that those pieces were long enough to tuck around the, the back of the tin can. That way you can see that it's like one piece um, and it didn't have any weird cutoffs. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for the top. Once those are on there nice and secure, I'm going to take my hot glue. I'm going to go to the back. And this is a little bit messy, but I feel like it's necessary. So I filled that entire end with glue and used uh, my little silicone thimble thing and kind of smushed it down to make sure all of those end frays are really adhered to themselves and the can. That way that I won't have to worry about them popping up at a later date. And I did that with all four pieces that were cut. The last thing for me to do would be to add a little hanger. I'm going to use that same nautical rope and I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue again and I'm going to adhere it into the sides. I tried to make sure there was like a good inch to inch and a half of rope actually in the bucket to make sure there was plenty of the material glued to it. And then once that was dry, I took hot glue and I did a really thick coating over the front of it to make sure that it's really stuck on there and that if it were to peel off, it would really need to be yanked on. Just again, to make this kind of match and flow a little bit better, this, um, you know, that B is really stark white and this nautical rope is more of a cream color. Um, I don't mind the cream because it kind of matches the bucket, the underneath colors, but I am going to take some of that same white from the B and just dry brush it onto the um, nautical rope. Now I did do this, I mixed just like two drops of water with some of that white and um, I basically tapped it, offloaded it, and then dry brushed it all over that. And it just slightly changed the color enough to kind of make it all come together. And then we are done with this tin bucket number one. I'm going to just add some florals for you and voila, as easy as that. For the white bucket, we're going to be taking... Um, this placemat that I had picked up at from my thrift store a while ago and using that to create a bigger piece of decor. With this, I am wanting to attach the two pieces and I'm also going to be using um, this little round Dollar Tree metal wreath that says welcome. So I'm going to attach all three pieces. I'm going to start with attaching the little wreath to the can. I'm going to be doing that using my um, drill and a very small drill bit. I'm going to kind of place it on, mark where I want my holes very carefully because it does slide around. It's not the easiest thing to do. So just be careful, be mindful of your fingers um, and just make sure that when, you know, your drill bit's not going into anything on the other side and make your holes. Now I did um, two at the top and then four at the bottom on the sides and I'm just going to take some thin floral wire and I'm going to attach this piece together. Just going to loop them through and secure them in the back so that would be inside the can. You can't see them. Um, twist them up really good and then make sure that they're nice and adhered. And once that is secure, I'm going to uh, take the tin can and connect it to the placemat. I did forget that I did take a little bit of this darker, um, like, what's it called? 
It's brushed dark gray by um, Folk Art. It's just like a, an acrylic paint. And I did take that and kind of dry brush it onto that little welcome wreath because it was almost too bright and too new for the distressy look that I was doing. So I just wanted to give it a little bit of dimension. So I dry brushed it on and then I took a baby wipe and kind of like dabbed it off just so you can see some of the fresh metal and then it made it look like a little bit of a um, aged metal as well. So sorry, I forgot to mention that, but now we're going to take the tin can and apply it to the uh, mat. Again, the colors weren't quite matching up for me here, so I took that same um, white chalk paint. I didn't use the baking soda one, but I do have the same color without baking soda, and I used that and I dry brush on the entire mat to change the color up to make them look more cohesive and that they fit together. And then I drilled two holes in the back side of the can to where I'm going to attach it with a wire. Now for this, I used a much thicker floral wire and it's nice and sturdy and I just found where I could get through the parts of the weave in the placemat and pushed them through. I pulled them around the back and then pushed them back through the opposite hole. And then in the front, that's where I cinched it down and made sure that everything was nice and secure. And for this piece, we're pretty much done. I did need to add a little hanger on the back, so I used that same um, thick floral wire, went through the weave and created like a little wire hanger. But I love this piece very, very much. It's super simple, but very elegant. I mean, I, I don't know, I feel like it looks like I really did something when really it was just kind of attaching things and painting things. It's it was actually pretty easy to do. I love it. We're just going to add some more florals. Actually, for this, we're going to stick to just some plain greenery because I feel like it would be a really good contrast with that white. And that's it. So you guys need to let me know which one do you prefer and do you have a different style that you would like me to try? I have many, many of these cans. I do have a several other projects um, aside from this specific, you know, like the squishing of the can thing. Um, that I do want to try, but those will be a little bit later. And yeah, just let me know. So give me a thumbs up if you like what I did here. And if you enjoyed this video, again, let me know in the comments which one is your favorite or if you've done this project, which one have you, what, what style have you gone for? How did you accomplish that? And feel free to share that with me on my Facebook page. I do have a link in the description of my Facebook group that we're trying to start up where people can just share their projects, their inspire each other their creativity and just kind of create a community where we can interact with each other and just bounce ideas off of each other and be with like-minded people if you're new subscribe i would love to have you here with us on our crafting journey if you're returning thank you so much i truly appreciate you i'm going to take you in for a closer look and i'll see you next time